Welcome back everyone to your MySQL tutorial series. I'm Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2, and in this video we are going to start talking about data integrity. Now there are three categories of data integrity. We have entity integrity, referential integrity, and domain integrity. Each one of these is going to get its own video. So this video is going to talk about entity integrity. Entity integrity is very simple. All it says is that every table needs a primary key. When you label something a primary key, it's automatically going to be unique and not null. Sorry, my dog is feasting right now. So if you hear nom, 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 in the background, it's him. <laughs> I apologize, he could not be stopped. In addition to this, a primary key should never change. These are the three things that need to happen for something to be a primary key. Now there's actually two classifications of primary keys, surrogate keys and natural keys. Surrogate keys are simple. They're just computer generated numbers that have no real world meaning. So this is often the ID column in a table. Natural keys on the other hand are a little bit harder to work with because these have to have real world meaning, such as a username or an email or anything that can be unique. Okay, Onyx, quit licking the floor. Now this is not something we tell the database. We don't say, yo database, this is a surrogate key or this is a natural key. Onyx, drink water, drink it. Drink your water. These are just, these are just terms for us to help understand the different kinds of keys. And these are terms people are going to use so you need to understand them. Why is having a key so important? Well, if you have a table, and it doesn't matter what the columns are, let's just say that's a row. And then we have another row, and you can see this is duplicate data. And this brings up the question, do we have one, two entries that are supposed to be different, or is this the same entry in there twice? It's kind of confusing. But if we have a primary key, we can always assume that they're two different things. So for example, if we have here eight and nine, and this would be like the ID, we know that this describes an entity and this describes an entity. So these are unique, check, they're not null because every single one has a value and it has to never change. Let's see what would happen if it did change. Let's say this changed to 19. Now we're confused because it was nine and now it's 19. So does this 19 refer to a new entity or the same entity with a new ID? It's confusing. If we were following the rules of primary keys and that they never change, I would assume that it's a new entity. And since people assume that, we don't want to change our primary keys ever. <laughs> so if you're using a natural key, you gotta make sure it's something that's not going to change. And that's kind of hard to figure out. Like an email, that's pretty good because it might not change, but what if someone wants to change their email? Well then they have to change their account information and then it's no longer a very good primary key. So you'd have to restrict people to not being able to update their email. Well, a username might work because in that situation, it's not going to change. And you can restrict people from updating their username. That's just for like a user table example, but you're gonna have those kind of problems with any table that you use natural keys. Because of that, I think more people are starting to use surrogate keys. Are surrogate keys better? I don't know, that's up to you. There's downsides and upsides to using either one. For example, natural keys are much more readable. Instead of having this number here, we could have a string that actually has a value in it. And this allows you to do less joins, which we haven't really discussed, but essentially when you have multiple tables and you wanna get data from both of these tables, you have to join them. Natural keys allow you to use less joins, but in general, I'm probably gonna go with surrogate keys. I think they're easier to work with and I think they're more common. If you wanna use natural keys, I'm totally cool with that. Just make sure that they're unique, not null, and they never change. Never. So yeah, everyone, that's your introduction to entity integrity. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next one.